morning, guys. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all over online. And today I would like to show you how we're going to make this clock. And I'm going to show you the supplies list. So if you'd like to stop the video right now and copy these or at some point after the video go back to this and copy it you can see everything that we'll be using today so that's the list forgive me if I've forgotten anything and you may want to just head on over to your favorite fabric store we are going to be using material this is very thin I wouldn't suggest anything that's thick that you'd use for upholstery or curtains you're also going to need numbers for your clock I wanted numerical I'm sorry I wanted Roman numerals I actually have this on my blog if you can find a way to copy and print the link you can go right ahead and do that and I'm using graphite paper to copy this and the first thing that I did is I decided on the prettiest part of the fabric to go onto my canvas and I want my clock to sit up this way and I'm going to cut out with my fabric scissors enough fabric to cover the canvas and to overlap it just a little bit back here now I'm going to take my decoupage glue this is not the fabric Mod Podge. I have the fabric Mod Podge listed on my website. But I did use this. I have used this before with fabric and it works just fine. So I'm going to add a layer of Mod Podge. Now I'm going to add the decoupage glue all around the trim. I'm going to need my scissors as I pull this fabric over. I need to add a little bit of decoupage glue. So you pull it tight so that it's right up against the edge.
So you just want to leave this someplace to dry. Make sure you don't have any air bubbles or wrinkles. And I'm going to rest this on top of a cup so that the front, the sides, and the back all dry evenly. We're going to let this dry before we move on to the next step. By the way, a lot of times I put my Mod Podge projects in the oven and uh, people will question me and ask me why I put it in the oven or if you have to put it in the oven. You don't have to put it in the oven, but Mod Podge actually hardens and gets a bit more secure when you do put it in the oven. I put it in just to dry it quicker, especially this piece, because I want to move on to the next part, which is decoupaging the top, and then I'll put it back in the oven. I set the oven to 250 after I put this in. Let it reach 250. When my oven beeped to let me know it reached 250, I turned it off and let this dry off in there. And I got that very pleasant wood burning smell, <laughs> which I liked. But before we put this next coat of decoupage glue on here, this is optional, but this is why we need the gesso if you'd like to do this. I want to age this a tiny bit. Pour a little bit of the gesso on there. You can either use a chip brush or a wide artist's brush. And what you want to do is dry sounds just like what it is. You don't want the brush to be full of paint, so you want to get a little bit of the paint on there. and kind of get a lot of it off. Here's a piece of the scrap. So what you want to do with the scrap piece is lightly run or drag the brush along. Now that's too heavy. And here's what you want. The brush is almost dry and if you press down it leaves a little bit of streaking. And you might want to practice with this first. Just put it in uh, different areas. You don't want to go all over the canvas, all over your fabric, but just in certain areas. This is almost dry already, so I'm just going to give it about a half a minute to dry. <laughs> and then I'm going to put my coat of decoupage glue over the whole surface and the back. And again, I'm going to put it in the cold oven, which probably hasn't even cooled off yet. Uh, let it. I'm going to turn it up to 250, let it sit. And again, you don't have to do this. You can just let this air dry. And here's where you can either go to my website and print this out. I really wanted Roman numerals for this. They just tend to look a little bit more vintage. But there's several other ways that you can do this. You can do a transfer on here. You can stencil the numbers on. If you feel confident enough to freeform them, you can draw them with a pencil first and then a marker. But here's what I'm going to do first. I'm taking a piece of the fabric, a scrap piece, this graphite paper or tracing paper, a pen. You can use a pencil for this if you want. And what I'm going to do is trace this number. Now you can see how that barely shows up, which is good. And I took some of my markers and tried to match them. Now I have a bunch of different magic markers. And I tried to match them 
as best I could or match the color. to outline the numbers because in this pattern at least there is some black. When measuring for the center of the clock so that you'll know where to put the clock piece. What kind of a ruler is this? <laughs> this will also help determine how to center your numbers. I think it'll make it easier for me if I cut this out. needs to dry so I'm going to go around and put the numbers in the other places on my clock. You may want to use a little piece of low tack tape So the numbers are done. So let's put the top coat on this. Make sure that your markers are dry. You don't want that smearing. They tend to dry pretty quickly, although if they feel a little tacky, I'd still give it a couple of minutes. So I'm going to put my matte varnish on top of here. I want to keep it matte. There's a tiny bit of a shine. That's okay. I'm going to add that on here right now and let that dry and I'll be right back. I'd like to add the clock. The instructions are on the back. I don't have the space on this disc to go through all of these steps, but I think it would be boring for you anyway, really. <laughs> so I'm going to put this on off camera. However, I, I will tell, sorry, I will tell you that I already marked a spot in the center for where I'm going to put it. And to start the hole, I'm just going to take a nail and hammer it through there so that I can see on the back where my clock goes. I'm going to tape this into place because I notice it keeps moving. All right, the clock is installed and working. That was a challenge. You're, um, you should be happy that I didn't make you watch that because it didn't go that well. It was a little bit difficult to do. So now I think we've got it all together. I added the tape to the back, which doesn't look too nice, and I'm not all that wild about the rest of this. Now, if you are selling these or giving it as a gift, you can add a little Velcro back here and just apply a piece of the fabric right over it. And I say Velcro because you're going to need to change that battery every so often, but this will lay flat. It will cover it. You won't see any of that on the front. You could use anything to cover it, really. Uh, the main thing, though, is the front of it, and here's where you can add some elements. The top coat is on, and because these handles are up so far from the base, I can add some of these decorative elements. Now I'm going to take some of my ribbon. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac to place it on the back. This came with a hanger, but 
we don't want to use that or I don't right so I'm going to take some ribbon So there are our completed shabby chic clocks. Do a close up for you there. There are our elements. Clocks working just fine. And as always guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I love when you guys make comments, stop on by and say hello. And don't forget about my Facebook page, Upcycle with Decoupage. And I will see you next week with another video. It's the 4th of July here, which we celebrate in the States. If you're here in the States, happy 4th of July. If not, just have a wonderful weekend and a happy week. And thank you so much for subscribing. I will see you guys next week with another video. Bye-bye.